in your format? Hi, it's Cappy from Always in Stitches, and I have some exciting news. Some of you have been following um, my Tula English paper piecing um, project, and I actually have the Tula Nova, that's what's behind me, completely pieced, which um, it's just that aha moment that it's like, I did it! Um, so I haven't actually pressed it completely, and I haven't... Uh, sewn it down and all that. So this is really literally, I ripped the back papers out and she's ready now to be applied to a backing or, I initially had thought I was gonna make like a big square piece and applique it to that. But I'll tell you the truth, I am so in love with these angles out here and the time that it took to create those that I really think I'm going to um, attach a back to this and attach just a binding and follow the shape of the outline of the quilt so that I just have this big piece uh, to use either as a table topper, I might even like put some eau de coat on it and put it on the floor of my quilt room, crafting room. Um, it'd be a shame to walk all over it, but at the same time, you know what, they're made to be used. I, I'm a firm believer in the crafts that we make should be functional, um, not just beautiful to look at, but if you don't surround yourself with that beauty, then then what's the point in doing it? So um, anyway, I'm still working on how I'm gonna use this piece when I'm done, but she is completely hand English pieced finished. So um, now comes the fun part, how to finish it up and make it look complete. So we're really looking forward to having this quilt uh, displayed in the store so you guys can come and see it when it's done. So um, anyway, that's done. But you know what happens when you finish a project this big? you start going, what am I going to do next? What's my next adventure, my next opus, so to speak? Because I thought I would never in a million years get this done, and it's done. Hallelujah. But honestly, when I got down to like the last row, I started going, well, what am I going to do next? Well, here's the good news. There's always another pattern. And so I found this pattern called Tula Bloomers, which is a really fun pattern. And again, it's English paper piecing. And I'll just tell you, I never in a million years thought I would be an English paper piecer. But here I am, English paper piecing. So this is a really fun pattern. And much as I love Tula's fabric, there's lots of other designers that do beautiful things. And, and I know um, all designers appreciate art in the purest sense. So there's another gal called Anna Maria Horner. And she does some really beautiful things as well. And so, um, her fabric came in, and I just finished this, and I thought, you know, I'm ready to start this fabric again. And so this is my next project. And so here's what I'm gonna be cutting out um, in, in pieces. And I wanna demonstrate to you, first of all, this amazing piece we have right here. So this is a, a light that board. Is beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> this is a light board that um, just came in, and it allows you to actually use your template. So I wanna show you how it lights up. So I just hold this here, and look, it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. How cool is that? So um, what I'm going to do is use this to cut with the templates that come with this kit. So I have several pieces to this. I have the template set, which gives me all the templates to cut for my paper piecing. So I've got them out here, so you can't really see them. But look how they glow on the thing. Is that fun? They're like fluorescent. That's kind of cool. I didn't know they were going to do that. And then in the pattern, it comes complete with the paper piecing templates. Now you can just use your paper piecing templates. I could just set this down, and I'll show you why I kind of don't want to do it this way, but I could just set this piece of template down on top of my fabric. Now see how it glows through wow. there? That's the best part. That's part of the reason we love this. I could set this on top of it. Oops, I touched it. I turned it down. Turn it back up, Cappy. There we go. Okay. So I could set this on here, but then I can't see it. I can't actually visually see what I'm working with. That's why I like the template, because I can actually watch and see how I'm going to place that big piece in the center because I can see through to the fabric and I can see through the template. Now this is a dark piece of fabric, so um, it may, I'm not sure how well it shows up on your it video. It shows up. Is it showing Crystal great? Crystal clear. Perfect. So then I can take the time to center this 
and get it just how I want it because I can see through the pieces. Now, when I when I was auditioning this fabric, there um, this is the piece that really spoke to me because of the opportunity to have repeating patterns. Because part of what makes English paper piecing so beautiful, and I want to go up to Tula, the Tula over here, Peter, if you can follow me, is this situation here where I took these two hexagons and mirror imaged the design. So this is the design and this is the design. And I get a secondary design because of the way they mirror each other, okay? That's what makes your English paper piecing phenomenal. And that's what we want to see happen. So when you look at, at Tula Nova, I've got all these fun little faces that pop up, the hands that are all centered. I can't do that without having templates to work with. The flowers are all centered. So when I'm auditioning fabric to start my next project, I'm looking at those features in the fabric and, and considering what's in here that can, I can create a mirror image with, or I can pull out as a feature. So like that little diamond, this little piece right here, now see he's too close to the edge, so I put my template on there. I'm not gonna get him because he's too tight. But if I go down here, there he is again, and I can center him up in that piece. Now, the other thing I'm gonna look at is what comes around him. So how am I gonna put this piece against the next piece so that they mirror each other? So I'm gonna center that up. I'm probably gonna use that particular flower in a smaller piece, like maybe this one. Ooh, looky there. Oh, wow. There it is. And that's why it's important to audition. So right here, I can mirror that piece and I can see there's my cutting line, or my folding line when I put it on the hexagon. So let's cut that one out just so you can see what I'm talking about, okay? Just so you get a sense of it. So I have a smaller rotary cutter here. This is a 28 millimeter rotary cutter. Your regular rotary cutter is considerably larger. Okay, so there's a 45 millimeter. And that's typical of what we're used to using when we're quilting. But I like this littler one when I'm cutting around these templates because it has a, a shorter curve, shorter turning radius, okay? So I would recommend getting a little smaller um, diameter if you can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this on here and I'm looking at the design of, is it folded under? I just wanted to, there we go. There you go, okay, so yeah, now you can see it's Bright Eyes by Anna Marie Horner. So I'm gonna center this and what I'm doing is I'm looking, let my scissors out. I'm looking at these points. So I'm, there's a point there, there's gonna be a point Let's see, ooh, what if I do that way? There we go. I'm trying to find like marks that help me remember how I did that. And I'll duplicate it. The other thing I want I can do is I can stack three or four layers of fabric and cut that again and again and again, like you would a stack and whack quilt. Same process. So I find my design. Here's another one. Okay, this one just caught my eye. This is such a squirrel thing, I'm just telling you. Here's another one. Look how this one's gonna cut up. This is gonna be gorgeous. Look here. Look how this one's gonna cut up. She's gonna fit in there perfectly. Look at that. I see a bunch of those happening in this quilt. Okay, so now I've centered my flower inside what's gonna be exposed. This is the edges that are gonna fold over, so that part's not gonna be seen. So I'm gonna cut this, and look, I'm cutting on the light board. What? What? Can you seriously think how great that is? And see, the other thing is, I can see that I'm not gonna have any of the purple, I'm only gonna have the blue that I want. Oh, here we go. And then this one, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it so you can yeah, see so what I'm doing. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's not blocking. So, so I'm not blocking the camera. Okay, so there's my Whoa. piece. See how, okay, now, here's gonna be my little paper piece part. And there's lots of ways to do this. You can sew it on there. Yeah. I am not, I'm, I'm not sewing, I'm lazy, I'm lazy out. I'm gonna put this in the center now, okay? And I can still see my little color through there. And then I have my glue stick. This is my, just my glue stick. And these are all things we carry in the shop, right? We all carry all these things in the shop, absolutely. And now, when I put my glue on, this was something Peter and I talked about after after I should have told him to do it this way. But anyway, when you put your glue on, you wanna be careful not to get all the way to that edge if you can avoid it. 
you really just kind of want a fine line because you want the fabric to fold over a little bit, and have a little gap there. So if you can see, I've just put a line, and there's between the edge of the glue and the edge of the card, there's maybe a sixteenth of an inch. I'm going to say maybe a sixteenth of an inch, and I'm going to fold that over. And I, I, I fold it down pretty tight. And then I go to the next spot. Same thing. I'm not getting right up. And that's why this has to roll out. I'm not getting right up to the edge. There's a little gap there because I want that fold to not be attached to the paper. So when I catch it with my thread, and it just stays down. Then I go to the next one. Same thing. And I go over the fabric, too. I want to catch the fabric. So now I fold down. This is my first piece of this quilt. You guys oh, are getting this to is the first watch piece, you the guys. the beginning of the quilt. This is very special. So there we go. Okay. See, again, if you, I don't know if you can see the yellow, but there's the yellow of the glue, and there's a little gap in there. I'm not gluing that part. And then I go again. And, you know, the glue on this, I just, it doesn't take a whole lot. It holds better than you think it will. And that's down. And then here's my last one. And again, there's there's a pretty, the guys, there's almost a quarter of an inch gap there. I'm really getting kind of farther out. But it's okay, as long as it's enough to catch the edge of the fabric. Okay, there's the first one. Look how fun that's going to be. Isn't that gorgeous? Now think about the fact that I'm going to cut out, and these are all going to be in a row now. They're going to mirror each other. Now, oh, look at this little one. Look how fun that one's going to be. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's awesome. <gasps> that one's going to be gorgeous. Now, see, and here's the other thing. I can use these lines. So here's here's the line of the fabric. I can line that up on here. Oh, line your... Line, see the edge uh -huh. of the template and the it's edge of the template? What ends up being your fold line. Right, that's going to be my fold line. So I put it on there and there. These pieces aren't really going to show... They might show just a scooch, just a little It'll bit of get color a little there. Pop of but that's little okay. Half a dot. Which little will be half cool. a dot. That'll be kind of fun. Okay, now I'm gonna do this again and try oh, not to. Oh, somebody made a comment and I missed it. Uh oh. I have to scroll back. Okay, scroll back. Why I cut? And I won't have to be like. Gay Barrett, love the Anna Maria Horner fabric for something like this. Cappy is hooked on EPP. Yes, <laughs> I am. And I, you know, I can just tell. I don't like cross stitch. It's too fussy. Um. I, I'm just, I'm shocked I like this. It, it was really one of these things that I fell into and went, oh, I really enjoy this. Okay, so now here we go. Now I'm going to line this up so that it's on those lines again. So see how I'm, I'm putting the edge of my fabric where that line is, the edge of my fabric on there. I'm kind of checking. There's going to be a little dot of green in each corner, which that's going to be fun to work with. Okay, so here I go. And I, I tell you the truth. Typically what I do is I cut all my pieces of fabric. And then I sit in the chair, you know, while husband has to watch TV and I get to sit there with him. And, I mean, I love to sit there with him. And I do all my gluing, you know. And I'll glue for a while. And then I'll decide I want to sew for a while. And I sew for a while. And then I glue for a while. I mean, I'm not... And there's some people, I suppose, they have to, like, cut everything out and then glue everything together and then sew everything together. I get bored. I get, like... I'm tired of gluing, I want to sew. Or I'm tired of, you know, cutting, I want to glue. So, you know, typical of a kindergarten kid, I want to change ideas. So, it's fine. I, I know where I'm going. Oh, man. This turned out really cool. This turned out super cool. Look at that dot. Hold it up to the This camera. is fabulous. Look at that. Look at the little dot of green right here. There we go. I actually got a little bit of... Oh, I love that little dot of I green. do, too. Isn't that going to be fun when I get several of them That's together? That's Yes. I didn't quite That's really center cool. it perfect. Isn't that fun? Yeah. I got a little bit of the purple. I might... See how there's a little blue there? I may have to slide that a little bit so that there's no purple on it. But is that not fun? So these together... See, look how you start putting them together. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. But this light board is cool. I, I'm just... I didn't have this light board when I cut these pieces, and I really wish I did. I think it will make the whole process more accurate. Um, I think, you know, don't lift clubs because we don't. We never point out our mistakes, but there's places in here where I could have positioned things better, and because I didn't have this backlighting, I couldn't see it to do it. So, 
this is my new, I'm getting ready to do bloomers. This is gonna be the new tool that's gonna to be the, wow, I'm really glad I had it. Um, beyond that, all the stuff that I said in my original Tula video, the, the number nine needles, um, I really like those uh, milliner needles, although there's another needle we may talk about that, that we like as well. The templates, I wouldn't do it without these. I truly, I mean, I get it, but I have, if I had to add the dimensions to this to make that, that means I gotta cut around it in a place and I can't find that, I'm not that sharp. I just need to be able to go, this is my template, that's what I cut. Instead of, oh, I got to add a quarter of an inch all the way around. Me, I'm not that accurate. Um, I do like this smaller rotary cutter because she works a little better. Of course, my glue stick. And then the, the, the most important part of your process is picking a fabric that has a nice range of colors and a nice variety of designs that you can cut and play with. Can, I'm going to cut that out. I can't even stand it. you got to see what that one does. Let's cut it out right now. Let's cut it out right now because I want to see. There's three pieces. That's the other thing. Sometimes I'm just playing with fabric and finding the parts that I like. It's like it's like when you're in school and the teacher says, cut it out right now. Yeah, cut this, it out. This is the time cut when you say, right now. okay, I can do oh, that. Oh, look. I was over there playing with the fabric. That's a little better. That's a little better. What does this do? Oh, that's neat. Yeah, it's kind of, I'm chopping off a little bit of the flower. See, some of oh, the flower is going away. That petal. doesn't make me happy. That doesn't make me happy. I think this is the, the better. The big one. Because then you this get is those the better. little bulbs. Yeah, you get the, the buds, the buds. Now, and then here's, and then see, this is a good design point because what I can do is I can oh. take, see, this point can the go stem. on that stem. Mm -hmm. This little curve can go right there in that point. Then... This one is going on that point, and then this edge can lay here. See, so then I've got reference points of what I'm doing. My flowers ended up right about in the middle. Let's cut that one, see what she looks like. I don't know, I may cut it out and go, yeah, I don't like it. As a matter of fact, <laughs> when I did Tula Nova, <laughs> I have a lot of pieces that were rejects, but that doesn't mean they won't end up in another project and be very happy. You know, they were just opportunities to audition something and go, yeah, I don't like that. Again, trying to do this so you can see me makes a little awkward cutting, but I promise not to cut my finger off on the screen. There we go. Okay, let's see how she shapes up. Yeah, I just sit and glue. I'm, I'm, it's like I'm still in kindergarten. I'm still playing with glue, but I'm not eating it. Just so you know. The other thing, you'll notice my fabric's not pressed. I'm not going to worry about it because when it sits, as long as it's going to sit in the process of me waiting to sew it together, it it flattens itself out. I mean, if it was horribly wrinkly, I might do something. But for the most part, I'm not too concerned about the wrinkles because they're going to come out and it's going to flatten itself out as it sits on this cardboard. And you can reuse these. Um, that's the other good thing I like about them. If you're careful and the glue kind of dries and goes away, you can absolutely reuse these pieces again and again, these cardboard pieces. And if you can't, you can always make more. Okay, see how quick that went? So I wasn't stopping and explaining it the whole way. <gasps> Look at that. And then we're going to put these around. Hold, hold, that up. hold that up. Like up, 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 here. up, up, up. Because I want to get, there we go. Isn't that fun? Isn't that going to be a great feature piece in all these little... Oh, those colors are beautiful. They're gorgeous. And then, you know, who knows whether these will end up around it or how this is going to fit. But there's some of my pieces that are going to go... I, I can't wait to get started now. I'm going to have to go home and sew. Look how look how there's a little bit of that... Oh, oh look. Oh, See no. how those, are, those notches yeah. are coming together? Uh-huh. So now I've... Now that I've figured that out, I may have to try and accomplish that on all of them. We're talking about we're talking about this little spot right here. This little spot right here where these two are coming together. See how that's working? That's what you're looking for in English paper piecing, is those little details that pull the pieces together and make you stop and look. It's like a Where's Waldo puzzle, because you find something and you're like, oh, look how that matches. Well, wait, that matches here. Um, and that's what makes it fun. So we do sell these light boards at the store. They also have this really cool carry case, which is would be perfect mm. 
Um, it has a shoulder strap, so I'm a big goofball. I was schlepping all this stuff out of out to bring it today, and I carried this by the handle, and I had like three things on the handle, and I get here today, and I open the bag, it's like, oh, there was a shoulder thing. If I had a shoulder thing, I'd have like, right. <laughs> But you know, you don't pay attention in the moment. Okay, so just to, to tell you real quick with bloomers, too, one of the things that bloomers in the pattern does, which I've lost the picture of the pattern, it's here somewhere. Gosh, I'm like Eleanor Burns almost making a mess. Okay, so if you look at the pattern, it has a color gradient. It goes from like pink all the way down to a deep purple. So to make the background, because each of these has like a medallion and then the background is what gradient, I'm going to use these solids to make my gradients. And so this was a layer cake and it just happens to blend perfectly. And so this is gonna give me the gradient backgrounds that I need, and I don't have to figure it out. It's already sorted for me as a gradient set of colors that move through the color wheel. So that's another thing that's gonna make my, my design and layout part a little easier. Those two don't belong there. They are in the wrong place. I'm gonna pull those out. They need to go up here. But you can see that's gonna be my color wheel so that when you look at the pattern, it's gonna go from this light color in this corner down to a dark purple in the other corner. And that's how I'm gonna use these. So I bought two layer cakes to make the background pieces. So there you have it. We'll see how it goes. Another journey. You can follow me in with this one as well as we did with Tula. Thanks for watching. Any questions, call the store, 317-776-4227. Our website's www.alwaysandstitches1, because we're your number one store.com. Thanks. Happy stitching.